Hey guys, it's Cadroth again. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the quick comps for Guildfest. Now you guys may have seen my prior video on the arts comps, and as of the time of recording this, it's actually not out yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you guys might have already watched that one, but if you haven't, feel free to go ahead and check it out. Um, but again, this should be a very similar fashion to that. We're gonna cover the quick comps that I think could work for you. More of the, not necessarily every every single comp out there, but at least some of the ones that I think most of you guys should be able to pull off. We're going to go through the NP levels and sort of the things that I think you need to watch out for, the assumptions that'll be at play when using one of these comps and the advantages of using these comps. A couple of these assumptions that we are going to have at play across all the sheets that I'm about to show you is basically there's going to be assumptions involving the servants, there's going to be assumptions involving the craft essences, and there's going to be assumptions involving the mystic codes. So for servants, some of the assumptions we're going to have is that you have foed each one of the servants we're talking about. Now, not to 2000 foes or anything like that. We're not requiring you to use gold foes. If you have something above and beyond what we're recommending, that's great. And that means foes and grails, but we're not recommending that. We're going to go with a baseline here. So as long as you have your servant foed to a thousand, you're probably good. Another one that we're going to assume is make sure that you have all of your servants strengthenings and interludes done. For instance, Dantes, you really need to have his NP interlude done. For Lancelot, you really need to have his third skill unlocked because you're not going to be looping without it. And then obviously the last one is that we're going to assume skill levels on these servants. Yes, there may be some times where you can get away with less. I will maybe try to talk about that when I come across it, but for the most part, please assume that you're going to need the skill levels that we recommend because you really don't want to be getting to that cusp where it just fails just because of that skill level. You want to make sure that that's not one of the factors actors in the RNG of your comp. Now the next set of assumptions we're going to have are the craft essence ones. You're going to see here there may be a couple of craft essences that we chose that might have confused you. You might not have the craft essence to pull off a certain comp either. I'm going to talk about that. One of the things that I think is probably going to be the biggest one is going to be a super scope. For reference of that in the context of this video, a super scope is a MLB K scope at level 100. So it's not just an MLB K scope, it's a level 100 K scope. For singular K scopes, so when we're just talking about a normal one, we just assume that the level on it is 20 so that you've leveled it up to its max that it can be. Then you're going to also notice some other craft essences out there like Aerial Drive. And you might be thinking, wait, this is a quick comp video. Why are you using Aerial Drive? So let me explain that to you. Aerial Drive is being chosen because it is a more recent welfare craft essence that can help you out as opposed to HNS, Holy Night Supper, that is an older craft essence that you can no longer obtain. We felt it would be a little bit unfair for us to recommend HNS level 100 or something like that, where most of you guys probably don't have it. Most of you guys might not have maxed it. So instead, we're actually going to be recommending a level 15 aerial drive on this. And then if you have something better that deals even more damage for a 50% starting charge craft essence, you can go with that and be fine. Because the assumption at play here will be that if it works with aerial drive, which is a buster CE on the side, then it should work for your other CE. So again, just to reiterate, these craft essences at play, the reason you need to level them up is because you're getting attack power out of them. That is going to be a big factor in the scaling of the damage of each of these comps and thus the NP level we recommend. If we were to say recommend to you a level 15 aerial drive and you have a level 100 one, that might allow you to get away with a lesser NP level. Just pay attention to that. That's something we're not going to be able to tell you because these are printed sheets here. But obviously, if you run the calculations yourself and you think you're fine, you should be good. So it's just something you might have to experiment with. And the last one that we're going to be assuming is the Mystic Codes. The majority of the Mystic Codes, as you guys are going to see in here, is either going to be Fragment of 2004, which some of you might not have, or Plug Suit. Again, you might be able to get away with some other Mystic Codes, but the reason we're going to recommend these two is that they are kind of the status quo for looping. I think a lot of you guys will see Fragment of 2004 is amazing because of not only its NP damage scaling on its first skill, but also the NP gain skill that it has that'll facilitate looping for maybe people who struggle, like Lancelot. And then the other one that we're going to talk about his plug suit or when you don't have that MLBK scope or when you need the additional charge from a support waiver or something like that. That's the reason that that's at play. But please understand when we're recommending these, we're recommending them at level 10. 
that's going to be a huge assumption there. If you don't have it at level 10, try to finish it off before Guild Fest. So on screen, you guys are going to see some more spreadsheets from my friend Bob Mosses. The layout of the sheet is such that you guys can see our comp over here and the assumptions at play. You guys can see it broken down between the nodes and you guys can see it broken down between the NP levels going across. Now, for starters, you guys are going to notice NP1 here is struggling a little bit with 0% chance to clear some of the later waves in each of these nodes. For that reason, you're really going to struggle with this comp. And this is one of the more high octane comps. This is the MLB Super Scope comp with Fragment of 2004. This is the comp that you guys most often see getting pedaled for Lancelot looping. It is the whaley comp. It is the really high output comp for Lancelot. Most of you guys won't be able to pull this off because of that MLB K scope requirement. And that's why I don't recommend this for most of you. Now, if you can pull this off, kudos, this is going to be an amazing comp. And I'm also going to kind of assume that if you have an MLB K scope, you probably have or at least had the capacity to get something stronger than an NP1 Lancelot. But otherwise, for NP2 and higher, this comp really should work the thing you guys are going to really have to watch out for on some of these again with Lancelot is going to be refund it's a little bit tricky you guys might even be able to see here in the finals wave at NP1 the refund actually doesn't cut it and that's just on that first wave now there are some tips and tricks that you guys can use to try and squeeze out a bit more refund especially on someone like Lancelot that has a lot of hit counts on his NP but it's basically to card some of the enemies ahead of time especially if you know you're going to kill them try and reduce their overall health level that might allow you to refund each overkill status a little bit faster as you guys know overkill gives you additional NP gain it's one of those things where especially when we're sitting right there at 48% and you really just need to reach 49.9 .9 in order to be able to charge yeah sometimes doing a little bit of carding can actually save you but you really don't want to have to rely upon that again my advice is to get something more consistent than that if you can but if you have to and it's the only way you can complete it not bad as for the skill order of this comp basically it's going to be blow both both of the Scotty's quick ups on Lancelot turn one, pop the Mystic Code in P gain, not Lancelot's third skill on turn one. And that way you guys will have a little bit of refund there. You'll be able to loop through. And then the important thing at play here is that if you save Lancelot's skill until the second turn to pop it, it's a three turn crit buff. So if you were to say somehow fail the final wave in this comp, which you shouldn't have an issue with for the most part, again, you guys can see most of the HPs remaining here are certainly doable at a Lancelot comp, especially because these quick comps, the advantage to them is you are going to be shitting stars the whole time. Crits are almost guaranteed after the fact. Getting a little bit more mileage out of this is not going to be too awful for completing that comp. What that does is if you pop that Lancelot third skill in the second turn, that means if you did somehow fail to clear the final wave, you would still have one more turn of crit up. Especially with all those stars generated, you should have a good shot at just making it a four turn and it being easy. Whereas if you pop it in the first turn, you don't get that three turn coverage beyond the three turn. I think it's just an extra little thing you can do to give yourself a little bit of assurance if it were to fail. And then the last thing that we're gonna point out here is the Scotty defense downs. When we're talking about Lancelot, we're just always going to assume that the Scotty defense downs are both happening in the final wave. It gives them that little bit of oomph that should make it a lot more consistent. If you find that you don't need it for the final wave and that you're struggling mightily with the second wave, maybe try experimenting with that and popping one in the second wave instead. But our recommendation is going to be both of them in the final wave. Now, the next comp at play that we have here is a normal K-scope comp. This is still using that Lancelot here with the skill at rank 10 for his third skill. We're gonna be using a level 10 plug suit we're going to be rotating a waiver with his third skill at 10 to help out with the charge. So this is a little bit more free to play friendly. Most of you guys should be able to achieve this. And I think this is going to be a very common one that we're going to see in the Guildfest comps. It is worth pointing out that just about all of these comps are going to be five craft essence comps. And what we mean by that when we say five CE comps is that you're going to be taking five lotto drop craft essences. The sixth craft essence is going to be the K scope or whatever starting charge craft essence you need on the looper that means you can't take six ce comps by doing quick so there are some six ce comps that you guys might have heard about with the arts comps you can see that in the arts video but again the assumption here is that you cannot run that due to the nature of quick looping still i think five ce comps are going to be the baseline for what most people can pull off 
most of the six CE comps that are at play out there are a little bit of RNG, a little bit of whaliness. Most of you guys should not be able to pull it off or are going to struggle mightily with the RNG if you were to try to do that. Again, Quick is mostly safe, mostly consistent here with this five CE comp. Don't be alarmed immediately on these comps when you see red on the refund of some of the first waves. That is the advantage to using this comp. Basically understand that we do not have a fragment of 2004 to give him that extra NP gain skill for another turn in this comp. Instead, we're using plug suit. What's gonna happen here is we're gonna split up the charge a little bit. So this comp is a little bit weird because we're going to be starting with Waver in the front line with a Scotty as well as Lancelot. It's not going to be double Scotty right there at the beginning. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pop both of Waver's final two skills there, get Lancelot to 100% because remember, he's starting with that normal K scope at 80. That's going to get him full charge you're going to put one Scotty's quick buff on him and you're gonna NP right there. No third skill for Lancelot, no double Scotty. That's gonna get him to this base about 20 plus refund every time. And so while it does appear as a red on the spreadsheet because it's not the 50%, you're actually fine there because you end up in wave two, having easily cleared the first wave there due to Lancelot's basic advantage against everything in the nodes. And then at that point, you should be okay because what you're gonna do is you're gonna pop Waver's first skill, which is the 30% charge on him to get him to 50%. And you're gonna rotate that Waver out. And now you have double Scotty. That's when you do the other Scotty quick buff. That's when you do a Scotty charge on Lancelot and you go ham. You're gonna also pop Lancelot's third skill in that wave. So be careful, don't forget it. This gives you that extra little turn of advantage for crit. Please do not pop it on the first wave. If you do that, you're gonna end up in a weird situation with your charge. Again, we're recommending holding that until the second wave again here, but that should make it consistent with the other comp a little bit, and it should give you a easy comp that works in the same way across all nodes for Gilfest. So that's the advantage of this. Again, you should be able to easily dispatch the second wave. You will see that some of the NP levels here are gonna struggle with the second wave a little bit and remaining health. Don't worry too much about that. Again, like we talked about, the crits are gonna be able to handle that. And then the final wave, again, you may notice clear percentages are gonna be a little bit low at NP1, but as you move up the list here, you should be okay. And again, most of these comps, you guys, I think are gonna notice that if you could actually get away with maybe more than what other people were telling you. Remember, these are the maximum HP remaining. So that's a minimum roll on the NP damage. You should be good for most of this, especially in the semifinals. You saw me talk about this in the arts video, but the good thing about the semifinals is that it's assassins and you're like wait that's not good cad that's bad and p gain on assassins is terrible and you're right but the good advantage is if something lives on the assassin one not only do you get to card it afterwards but the support casters that you're taking alongside your lancelot are also dealing effective damage against them it's a really nice thing that you're going to get to abuse and it actually is the case in the finals one as well for that second wave so again, you're gonna to get to the final wave on each of these and you're going to pop the double Scotty defense downs again. And you're basically just gonna go ham. Okay, so this is gonna be the last comp that we're gonna show you guys. This is an Arash comp is the big important thing, but it's also a damage CE comp for Lancelot. If you were to say find the other comps to be untenable, to RNG, maybe not working properly, the advantage to this comp, as you guys can see, even at NP1 on upward, you are basically going to be assured a clear here at 100%, no carding necessary, nothing, just easy. But again, the disadvantage to this is this is a 4 CE comp. So you are losing a drop craft essence for the lottery currency. I don't recommend this, but if you had no other alternative, if you had subpar skills, you might be able to compensate for that lack of advancement on that character and use this comp instead. So we're still gonna assume rank 10 skills here, but you might be able to get away with less. And in particular, the one I wanna point out is a rash here. Basically a rash plus the waiver attack buff that you get in turn one will always clear the front wave. That's why you see this gray bar in here and you don't see any calculations. We just learned that that's always gonna be the case. But one of the assumptions is that you have to have a 50% starting charge on a rash. If you do not, he's just not gonna have enough charge. The good thing is you don't necessarily have to have a rash's third skill at 10 either. It's just if you don't have his third skill at 10, you're gonna need a higher starting charge than 50%. So that could be an imaginary element, an MLB imaginary element, another K-scope, whatever. 
with the damage she you should be 100% on Lancelot's clears and that should take any RNG and carding out of the equation. Basically we're going to be dealing here with an order of operations that starts out Lancelot in the front wave, Arash in the front wave, and Waver in the front wave. You're going to pop all three of Waver's skills here on Lancelot. That should be enough to get Arash enough incidental charge to get him to full. Arash can go ahead and MP and rotate out and bring a Scotty in. On wave two, you're going to want to plug suit out that other waiver. Remember, Lancelot is now at 50% charge, so you're going to pop one of the Scotty charges on Lancelot. You're gonna pop both the quick ups on Lancelot, and you're going to pop Lancelot's third skill. You're gonna go ahead and MP then. He should easily clear because of the damage CE and the refund should be pretty good. So all you'll need to do on the last wave is pop the Scotty defense downs, pop the charge on Lancelot, and then maybe pop the Mystic Code if you feel like you need it in order to clear. At higher NP levels of this comp, you certainly won't, but at the lowest, you might. Again, just keep in mind that you might have to use the Mystic Code, but otherwise, it should be really simple and really quick and easy. So with me, guys? Okay. So the next section is going to be Dante's comps. Um, there are going to be some advantages to using Dante's and some disadvantages, particularly one of them it might be that you have to pay in mind a little bit more where you're using the Scotty defense down. When that happens, I will talk about it, so just pay close attention. So in a similar fashion to the Lancelot comps, our very first comp is going to be a Fragment of 2004 and Super Scope comp. Again, this is going to be the most high octane of the comps. You guys can see NP1 here is really going to struggle with having enough damage output, but it certainly will be possible to clear. The thing I want to point out is these quick comps have stars out the ass being generated from the NPs. Critting is not necessarily the biggest of your concern. But as we start creeping up here, upward into the 40k and 50k areas, this is going to get a little bit dicey. Just keep in mind, our recommendation for this is not necessarily going to be NP1, it's probably going to be NP2 and higher. NP2 should be more than capable. You've probably heard a lot of people talk about NP3, 4, and 5. You've maybe seen a lot of people wailing for NP5 lately. Don't worry too much about that. And actually, there is a weird comp that I'd like to touch on if you wanted to go back and watch one of my prior PSA videos on Gilfest. But basically, that talks about what to do if you don't have your own Dantes and how to handle this. There is an alternative to this method. Maybe if you only had an NP1, that might be something you'd want to check out because it involves using a friend support NP5. Dantes but again that's going to be hard for people to pull off due to the requirement for having all the other supports then. So touching on this one specifically you guys are going to see the assumptions at play are the first two of Dante's skills need to be at 10, we need Fragment of 2004 at 10, we need an MLB K-Scope, a Super Scope at level 100, we need Scotty to be at 10, 10, 10 and the support to be at 10, 10, 10 and that might sound like a lot but it really shouldn't be too much you should see a lot of 10, 10, 10 Scotties. Why well, you've seen probably a big emphasis on people to max their Scotty is because if it's not you really don't want to fail the loop because your friend couldn't get his act together. The other assumption at play here that's going to be a little bit weird like we had talked about in that opening segment here was that the Scotty defense down is actually going to come on wave two. The second Scotty defense down will still be on wave three but the first one needs to be on wave two just to make it a little bit more consistent. At higher MP levels you probably shouldn't struggle too much but you can see that even with this assumption at MP5 it is not a guaranteed clear by any means and you will have to occasionally card. So the order of operations in this comp is gonna be, again, you're going to have a Dante's double Scotty front line. You're going to blow both of the quick ups on Dante's. You're going to blow Dante's second skill, his NP gain skill right there in turn one. And then you're just gonna go ahead and MP. On turn two, you're going to charge him to full and pop that Scotty defense down. That Scotty defense down should be what you need in order to make that second wave more consistent. You guys can see it's really not going to be too bad with the defense down with the most you would need to do being somewhere in the 30k range here at NP1. You should be okay. But again, that is assuming that defense down in wave two. Wave three is going to behave similarly to wave two where you're going to pop Scotty's defense down. You're going to charge him to full. You're going to pop Dante's first skill now to get that extra oomph and you're going to pop fragment of 2004's first skill to get him that extra NP damage on that. Then you're just going to go ahead and let it rip and he should be fine. One of the other things I want to point out is again on top of carding you guys may be noticing that especially in the semi-final wave here on wave two you're getting some red marks. The red marks are fine 
remember this is based off of a minimum of NP gen or a minimum roll on the NP. The only one that should be concerning to you should be this 46% here at NP1. Dantes has a skill that gets him 3% charge per turn being an Avenger, so he should still end up at 49% there. But if it's flat even 49, you might want a little bit of oomph on that. That could be easily solved by perhaps just carding one of the low health enemies just with one card. Make sure that you don't crit them and kill them or even the high health enemy if that's the concern. So that way he gets a little bit more overkill to help him out or you can use fragment of 2004's NP charge skill just to make it consistent if you're worried about that. Otherwise, I think you guys are gonna see that this comp actually really doesn't rely too much on NP gain and should be fairly solid and robotic throughout the entire event. So then same thing as the Lancelot comps again. And this next comp is going to be your normal K-scope and plug suit comp with waiver added in. Just again, pay attention to the assumptions at play for the skills here. We are assuming a level 20 K-scope. We are assuming a level 10 plug suit. Basically the same thing is gonna happen again. All the same notes that I talked about in the prior comp. So if you guys are jumping to this comp, make sure that you go back and watch that prior section. But basically we're gonna have the NP refund here kind of being right on the cusp. 46 is the bare minimum one that you guys want to make sure you pay attention to here on the semifinals at NP1. Otherwise, you guys should be good for all the other ones because that 3% per turn should make it fine. Again, you guys are going to note here, we're getting into really dicey territory at NP1. This is why you're going to see most people recommend NP2 and higher. 60k is going to be really hard. And yes, while you will be shitting stars and you will have crits and Dante's defense down probably, understand one of the disadvantages to the Scotty comp is it's very debuff based as well. With Scotty defense downs, with Dante's defense down coming on his NP, if you don't land those and they miss and you end up having to card you might fail so just keep that in mind that you could get screwed by rng in these comps but they should still be fairly consistent so i'm not going to touch too much on the ins and outs of the individual comp here because again this function is really similar to the lancelot one but basically the order of operation should be that you're going to want a front line of waver dantes and scotty you are going to pop waver's last two skills to get dantes to 100 with that 80 percent normal k-scope from there you're going to pop dantes is middle skill for the charge you're going to pop scotty's quick up on dantes and you're going to go ahead and np that next turn you're going to use the charge on waiver to get dantes up even more you're going to rotate him out with a k-scope pop the second quick up from that second scotty on dantes again here and you're going to go ahead and np You'll note here that there is no requirement for a defense down on the second turn. Instead, you're going to want it for the third turn because you're not getting that really powerful 50% MP damage from the Fragment of 2004 like in the other comp. You're going to need a little bit more oomph for that final wave. Basically, once you've got Dante's topped off in that second wave, once you've got the quick ups on him, you can go ahead and MP. Pay attention to the carding here. If you're at a low MP level, it may be super important for that. And now for the final turn, you're going to want to basically pop both scotty's defense downs you're going to want to pop the plug suits attack buff and you're going to want to pop dante's first skill and then go ahead and np the other thing i want to note is if you are needing to card if it is getting a little bit dicey for you remember especially if you're short on stars if you didn't manage to generate 50 stars dante's third skill which we don't have a requirement on will still generate a decent chunk of stars for you if you're concerned that you might not have enough stars level that skill up to about four and you should be okay shouldn't be too big of a requirement on that and that can help you deal with oh crap maybe dantes didn't get a 100 percent chance to crit on one of his cards now for this next comp, this is the one you might have heard me talk about in the assumptions part. This is actually going to be the MLB Aerial Drive comp. So this is a 50% starting charge comp. MLB Aerial Drive will have 10% NP damage on it. Like we talked about, if you were to have something like HNS, it will do more damage for his NP because one of the aspects of Aerial Drive is that it's buster up. So I guess, sure, it might help out his card if you had to card, but otherwise it's not helping his MP damage as much as HNS would. So HNS would actually be a better solution for this comp. We're assuming Aerial drive because it should be more accessible to you guys most of you guys should have something in this vein we're also only assuming level 15 we're not getting a huge bump in attack power so if you were to say have a 50% starting charge craft essence that did boost the NP damage or the quick up or something like that, and maybe it was split stat and not as good, if you were to maybe level that up some or get that to a high level, that might be able to counteract the missing attack power out of this and maybe be able to do it. But 
just understand there might be alternatives but this is the reason we are recommending aerial drive here and not a better craft essence we're assuming a low bar to help you guys out. So this comp is going to, again, assume the plug suit as well as waiver in here. Again, the order of operations at play here is that we're going to start with a front line of waiver, Dante's and Scotty. You're gonna go ahead and blow all of waiver's buffs on Dante's turn one and rotate him out. When the other Scotty comes in, then you blow both the quick ups on Dante's for turn one. Still, you pop Dante's second skill and you go ahead and NP. So this is the difference with this comp is that the plug suit is happening literally on turn one right after the buffs before an MP even fires off. From here, you're going to be in turn two. You're just going to charge Dante's to full and NP again. Turn three, you're going to go ahead and pop Dante's first skill for the extra power. You're going to go ahead and pop both the defense downs for more oomph. You're going to go ahead and pop the Mysticote attack buff for more oomph. Be careful. You really don't want, especially at a low MP level of Dante's, some of these defense downs whiffing. Also, remember if you guys are lacking stars, Dante's third skill exists. You can try to reach that 50 stars in that turn. That way his cards reach 100% crit because otherwise the casters are likely to steal from him and he may only end up at 60 or 80% on a quick card. You really don't want that in a cardings type situation. So pay attention there a little bit and watch to see if you need to pop the third skill. But otherwise, you guys should be pretty good at the higher MP levels of this comp and then the lower MP levels are where you're really gonna have to pay attention. But that's gonna be consistent across all the comps. So this is gonna be the final Dante's comp that we're gonna recommend here. And again, this is gonna be the Arash plug suit waiver comp this is the 4 ce comp with the damage c again this is not an mlb damage c it's just a level one basic damage c you guys should easily be able to have this by the time you're going after the lotto currency again the same assumptions as with the lancelot comp you guys are going to see that a rash plus the waiver attack buff and a minimum of 50 percent starting charge ce on a rash will always kill the front wave in all of the nodes across the preliminary semifinals and finals that's really good about this comp again the advantage to using this is 100 percent clear clear rate on everything other than in the semifinals the last wave and you guys are going to be fine here with only 6k remaining any card should kill especially in a Dante's comp the only thing you're really gonna have to watch out for is did you maybe whiff on some of the defense downs so same assumptions at play as with the other variant of this comp you don't necessarily have to have a rash at a rank 10 charge skill just remember it means you're going to possibly have to use a better starting charge craft essence than 50% on him you may need to use a imaginary element you may Need to use an MLB imaginary element, you may need to use a normal K scope. Again, it's just going to depend on the charge of your skill, but you should be fine. So just work with what you have. And again, the order of operations here is going to go a rash in the front line, Dante's, and Waver. You're basically going to pop all of Waver's skills on Dante's. That should be enough with a rash's charge skill to get a rash to full. And you're going to go ahead and MP with him, and he's going to take out that first wave. That's going to rotate a Scotty in for the second wave. You're going to rotate the Waver out with the plug suit in the second wave as well. And that should get you double Scotty Dante's right there at that point with Dante's at 50 percent charge you're going to charge Dante's to 100 percent with one of the Scotty's charge skills you're going to pop both the quick ups on Dante's and you're going to pop Dante's MP gain skill you're going to go ahead and MP that second wave again across all the comps even at NP1 that is 100 percent clear and then for the third wave you're going to pop both the Scotty defense downs charge Dante's to full again pop Dante's first skill pop the mystic code attack buff if you need it and go ham okay now we've got two other kind of weird comps that we're going to talk about here guys so this is going to be comps for fran and a comp for atalanta on the final node so right now some of you guys might be saying wait fran can loop yeah i think she's not one of the more well-known ones but she actually can loop and she actually hits very hard that's one of the advantages to using her the disadvantage is the requirements of the comp it is an mlb k scope there is no other variant possible so this tends to be a very whaley comp but it is a very consistent one and very interesting one to say the least now pay very close attention to the assumptions at play here so we are assuming a 10 9 10 fran this does need to be this case we are assuming level 10 plug suit obviously we are assuming an mlb k scope a super scope variant of that at level 100 we are assuming double scotty at 10 10 10 and then bb or nightingale now this is important and i will talk about it a little bit here so when using fran you have two options for how to get rid of fran's stun because as you guys know every time she np she's gonna stun herself and that's why people think she can't loop but she actually can you just have to have a way to deal with it those two options are going to be bb or nightingale now bb has a debuff cleanse that basically will not only get rid of that first debuff but also block the second debuff 
from occurring. So basically what you would do with Fran in that situation is you would NP, let her stun herself, rotate a BB in, cleanse the stun, and then she's blocked for the next stun. Then Fran will only stun herself on the final wave, which you need to be careful of if there's HP remaining, because it would mean if you ended up with all Fran cards, you would need to use Fran's cards before her NP in that final wave. So that's a little bit of the annoyance of using BB. The advantage to that is if you were around for the CCC event and have her, and this is, by the way, the original BB, we're not talking summer BB here, so don't get confused, but the original single target arts moon cancer here, BB, the welfare variant, if you're using her, the advantage is you didn't have to do anything, you didn't have to gotcha, you didn't have to upgrade or anything like that. Whereas if we're using Nightingale, the advantage to using Nightingale, if you manage to have her, is yes, you do have to enhance that skill for her by doing, I believe it's an interlude, it might be a strengthening, I don't remember don't quote me on that but once you've done that for nightingale that skill turns into a three turn debuff immunity so the advantage to using nightingale is while well, yes you would have had to have gotcha to have got her the advantage is that you can start with her in the front wave and basically debuff immunize brand all the way through three turns so getting into the comp at play here, I'm going to break it down in both ways for you guys. The other things I want to point out here is be careful at NP1, obviously, of Fran in this comp. You guys can see the refund is really kind of lacking, especially in the semifinals. And just remember, there are some tricks that you can do to squeeze out a little bit more refund, including carding the enemies beforehand. Just make sure you don't kill them, because if you kill them, you're losing that extra target for the NP gain on the NP. But if you can whittle them down to reach overkill faster with the NP, then you might be able to squeeze out a little bit more. I'm going to tell you the one that probably doesn't work right here is the 45.5% in the semifinals, so be very careful about that. I'm not necessarily going to recommend her for semifinals because of it, but you can maybe get away if you can card with her after the NP. The other problem that you guys are going to see here is because you're using Plug Suit, there's no extra NP gain from Fragment of 2004 or anything like that, so that's another restriction by the comp. Let's talk about the BB comp first. So with the BB comp, you guys are basically going to want to start with double Scotty in the front wave. You're going to pop both Scotty's quick ups on Fran. You're going to pop Fran's galvanism. That's her first skill to help out with her NP gain. And you're basically going to go ahead and NP. The issue there is then Fran stuns herself. So on wave two, you are going to have to plug suit BB in for one of the Scotties. So make sure you pop that Scotty's defense down in the second wave. That way you get the full advantage of that. But yes, that's also the disadvantage is then for the final wave, you don't have double defense down. So then from there, you're going to use BB's cleanse skill on Fran, make it so that she's not stunned. And then that should block her for being stunned after the second turns in P as well. Fran can go ahead and in P at this point. She should get back to a decent refund. But remember that second wave is going to be where it's going to be really dicey for you. So pay attention and maybe consider carding if you have to. And then for the third wave, you're just going to charge Fran back up to full. You're going to go ahead and pop Fran's defense down on the high health enemy of the third wave and you're going to go ahead and pop Fran's NP damage up as well as the plug suit attack buff and then go ahead and NP. Remember again in the BB comp you're going to get stunned after this NP so after the wave 3 NP you'll be stunned so pay attention if you end up with all Fran cards and you think that the enemy is going to live with some remaining health you're going to need to make sure you card ahead of that. Watch out for that little additional problem with using BB here. If we're talking Nightingale, the comp gets way easier. You start out with Nightingale on the front wave and Scotty and Fran. You're gonna blow Scotty's quick up on Fran. You're gonna pop Fran's Galvanism. You're going to use Nightingale's debuff immunity on Fran for three turns. And then if you really want a little bit of extra help with carding, you also get to pop Nightingale's Buster buff for Fran. Basically, you're gonna do that. You're gonna rotate Nightingale out right there before the first NP ever even occurs bring that other scotty in pop another quick up on fran and then basically you're good to go with double scotty bus from there you're going to go ahead and p and get to wave two wave two you won't be required to put a defense down because you're not working with bb in this circumstance and rotating someone in but again pay attention your refund on wave two is going to be the big concern here so you might want to consider popping a defense down in wave two in case you're finding that to be untenable and this is kind of why we're not necessarily going to recommend fran for a lot of you guys because unless you're really working with mp5 a lot of these comps could get a little dicey with the refund Again, you also will have the additional benefit of that extra buster buff from Nightingale to maybe help you out a little bit, especially on the final way for making sure stuff kills. So basically at that point, you're going to charge Fran to full again, MP with her again, get to wave three, 
from there you're gonna pop Fran's defense down on the high health enemy you're gonna pop Fran's NP damage up and you're gonna pop the mystic code attack buff and go ham so in one little attachment here at the end this spreadsheet was not calculated with any of the defense downs so you guys are safe to play around with that that does mean too that the refund that you guys see that's a little bit lacking can be bumped up a little bit so Fran hits really hard that is the advantage to using her but again just pay attention here to that refund and you're gonna have to figure out where to use the defense down so the last comps I'm going to show you for this video, guys, are going to be an Atalanta comp, or rather several, but she only works on the finals node. So you guys aren't going to see us break it down by finals. Instead, you're going to see us break it down by basically the type of comp that we're dealing with here. One thing I cannot say enough about is that we basically don't recommend this comp. I've had a lot of people ask me after talking about Jarcher and doing it in the arts video, and oh, well, does Atalanta work? And yes, she does, but you're basically going to see that really the only time it kind of becomes consistent is at NP5. So we're going to tell you to go with that. If you really don't like some of the refund numbers on some of the other comps here, and we don't like her chance to kill at low MP levels as well, it's going to get a little bit spicy using Atalanta. But if you did have an MP5 or you were willing to step down to the damage CE in a rash, it can become consistent. So starting out here with the super scope comp i think the big takeaway here and this applies to some of the other ones as well but it's that basically atalanta might be the only person we've seen that actually struggles with wave one and part of the reason for that is because she is at disadvantage against the enemies in wave one and remember this is the finals wave okay so these are going to be assassins these aren't sabers that she's going up against so not only are you dealing with neutralness of the class but you're also dealing with bad refund and then a bad attribute that that's further hurting her damage. A little bit, the conditions for how to clear this are going to be variable by each of these comps, and we're gonna have to walk you guys through how to handle each one. For the super scope comp here, again, remember both Scotty's in the front wave here, you're gonna pop Scotty's quick ups on Atalanta. You're going to actually pop one of the Scotty defense downs in this wave as well, which is a little bit spicy, because again, this is just how much he struggles with it. You're gonna pop Atalanta's third skill, and you're gonna go ahead and MP. Remember guys, at the low MP thresholds for this comp, we really don't recommend it due to the bad refund. Basically at MP4 and MP5, you should be fine at 49.3 on that first wave. For wave two, you're gonna wanna charge Atalanta to full. You're gonna wanna take your Fragment of 2004's NP gain buff and pop it on Atalanta for this turn so that she clears. Remember, you're gonna be dealing with a Spriggan in this wave too, but should be a little bit kinder, especially with it just being Earth trait, which she's neutral to. Once you charge her to full, once you pop that 2004's NP gain skill on her, go ahead and NP. And basically for the third and final, wave you go ahead and pop the mystic codes np damage buff on her you go ahead and pop atalanta's quick up on herself you go ahead and charge her back to full and blow the last scotty defense down and you should be good so we're going to be doing the k-scope waiver comp now and this is a normal k-scope just remember and this is going to function exactly like lancelot and dante's variants basically you're going to start the node with waiver atalanta and scotty in the opening you're going to want to pop scotty's quick up on atalanta you're going to want to pop atalanta's np gain skill in her third skill and you're going to want to pop waiver's last two skills to get her to full charge you're going to go ahead and np at this point and you guys are going to notice that the np refund is actually pretty shit here at 20 percent but remember don't worry about this because it's planned. So then as we get to wave two, basically you guys are going to notice that you're going to use waiver's first skill at this point on her get her to 50 percent charge you're going to rotate him out at this point you're going to bring in that other scotty put that quick up on atalanta and then here's where things get tricky in this second wave in this comp you can actually do two different things our advice is to go ahead and pop the quick up from atalanta in the second wave and yeah that sounds a little bit weird because that's her major damage steroid but you actually end up needing it for the refund in this comp Remember, you're not using Fragment of 2004. You don't have that little extra pick-me-up from the Mystic Code. We recommend actually popping the quick up here and then using the Scotty defense downs in the final wave. In this scenario, you would charge her to full, pop her quick up, and go ahead and NP. Then from there, you're going to pop the Scotty defense downs. You're not going to have her steroid in the final wave. You're going to pop the Mystic Code attack buff, and you're just going to NP again. The result from this is that you will have more damage output in this comp, but the thing that we're going to say is if you don't like the prospect of the servants in the final wave resisting Scotty's defense downs, you can actually flip-flop this and you can do both defense downs in the second wave instead and Atalanta's quick up in the third wave. The difference there is going to be that she should have just enough refund in the second wave if you do it that way. Using the steroid in the third wave, 
will result in less damage than 60% of defense downs from the double Scotties there rather than 50% of quick up. That's why it's going to result in a little bit less damage. The minimum threshold is going to be somewhere around, I believe, 23, 24K on that. So that's the maximum amount of health that could remain. So the worst thing that could happen would be is if you just got a mixture of an Atalanta Arts card and a Scotty Arts card or something like that. But again, you should be shitting stars here. So probably not a huge deal. And then also the fact that if you do manage to get a quick card, even if it's Scotty's quick card, the one who's going to survive here is going to be Osaka Behime. Osaka Behime is not going to be a big deal because she's an assassin and your Scotty, even if you ended up with all Scotty cards, is going to deal effective damage against her. You don't have a defense down in this wave to help boost you, but you should be able to crit. And the other advantage here is even if you were to end up with Scotty's quick card, Atalanta's quick buff is actually party wide. You do get a little bit extra pick me up there. So if you find that that's a safer play, go with that. Go with Atalanta's quick buff in the third turn and the double defense downs in the second turn or you can do it like we've shown here on the spreadsheet and do Atalanta's quick up in the second turn and both defense downs in the third turn if you just want more damage just understand the risk of that is potential servant resistance against the debuffs for the third comp here this is the aerial drive waiver variant remember the reason we're using aerial drive here is not because it's necessarily good to use it's just a 50 percent starting charge craft essence with 10 percent np damage there are obviously better craft essences to use we're using aerial drive as the minimum bar sort of for what we would expect it's also mlb but it's only level 15 so we're not assuming a super variant of it leveled up all the way to 100 remember if you can get away with aerial drive you can probably get away with hns you can probably get away with anything that would have have starting charge all attack and maybe quick up np damage up or whatever anything that you think could help you and if you did have a hybrid stat craft essence if you maybe leveled it up a little bit higher than 15 it might be enough to make the difference as well here for the front line of this one we're going to do waiver atalanta scotty you're going to blow all of waiver's buffs on atalanta you're going to pop atalanta's third skill you're going to blow scotty's first skill and then you're actually going to pop scotty's defense down on wave one and remember this is because of the fact that the first wave here is just really bad for Atalanta being neutral class and bad NP refund being assassins and bad attribute bonus because she's countered by Sky. But then from there, you're going to want to plug suit out that waiver, bring in the other Scotty, pop her quick up on Atalanta, and then you should be good to go ahead and NP. Just don't forget that initial Scotty defense down on this wave. For wave two, you're going to charge her back up to full. You are going to pop another Scotty defense down in wave two. Yes, you've lost all of your defense downs right here, but you should be okay due to the additional output of the aerial drive. From there, wave three, you're going to go ahead and pop Atalanta's quick up and the plug suit attack buff. So in this comp, we're not relying on defense downs in the third wave and you don't have to worry about enemy resistances from the servants. That's gonna make this comp a little bit better than probably the normal scope comp just due to the fact that it's not gonna be relying on defense down in the final wave. You guys should be fine here. Again, NP4 and 5 should be okay at decent chunks of HP remaining at minimum, but again, the crits and especially the fact that this will be Osaka Behime and your caster should be effective should really help you out. You might be able to get away with it at NP3, Again, the problem is going to be the refund coming off the back of the second wave. You can stretch that a little bit. You probably need 0.6 more refund. So you might have to card a little bit prior to that one. Maybe card the Spriggan a little bit. Try to get her to that overkill. Try and get just that much more in P game. Just be careful that you don't kill an enemy if you're going to card. Otherwise, you're shafting yourself entirely for NP refund. The last comp that we're going to have in this video is going to be the damage CE and a rash comp here with Atalanta. This is again going to be a 4 CE comp because you're dealing with a starting charge craft essence on a rash. It has to be a minimum of 50%. And then for Atalanta, you're going to have the damage CE. So you're not able to take more than four lotto currency CEs for this. So that's the disadvantage of this comp. The advantage is it's 100% consistent even at NP1. You can see the refund on the second wave for Atalanta would get a little close, but again, 49.7 will round up so you should be good there make sure guys that you've done her ashes np interlude again i cannot stress that enough but if you don't have his third skill at rank 10 it's not the end of the world you just might need more starting charge on the craft essence you don't care about his damage output from the standpoint of once you've done the interludes and you've foed him he should be good as long as you have waivers attack buff the order of operations for this one is going to be a rash in the front line atalanta and waiver you're going to go ahead and blow all of waivers skills on atalanta get her to 50 percent you're going to to charge a rash to full with his charge skill and you're going to go ahead and let him rip he's going to np that first wave kill it die get rotated out and bring a scotty
body in on wave two. You're gonna go ahead and rotate out the other waver with the plug suit rotate. You're gonna pull in the other Scotty. You're gonna take both Scotty's quick ups, slap them on Atalanta. You're gonna pop Atalanta's third skill for the NP game. You also need to charge her to full and you're gonna go ahead and NP. But remember, you've got the MLB damage C here. So you're gonna do a decent chunk of damage no matter what wave you're on now with Atalanta, no matter what NP level you have. So again, in the third wave, all you're gonna have to do is charge her to full. You're going to pop her quick up. You're gonna pop the Mystic Code attack buff and you're gonna pop the Scotty defense downs if you need them. This comp might not actually even have to rely on the Scotty defense downs and you may be able to have less button presses if you do that, which might speed you up and save you some time. Just again, remember the downside to using this comp is it's only four Cs instead of five like the standard. Oof, my voice is shot from doing all that, guys. So again, um, thank you all for watching. Uh, I had a blast making this. We're probably going to make another weird comp video sort of for Guildfest, but now with the uh, with the arts comps and the quick comps out there, most of you guys should be good for Guildfest. So thank you all for watching. If you guys haven't already, be sure to join our Discord channel. Um, we've got a great community on there that can help you out with any questions, including uh, myself and Mr. Bob Mosses, who made all those spreadsheets, are happy to answer questions for you. Uh, just if you do join the Discord, go up to the channel right at the very top and assign yourself a role by clicking in that role request channel in there. Um, again, guys, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. It does help out the channel. Let me know what you think I should make for my next video. Give me any ideas you got, and I will see you all in the next one.